All right. Here we go, people. Where do I start? You know, when I started this channel, it was originally just to rant my thoughts. And I didn't expect much from it. I was basically just trying to find a place to consolidate some ideas I had. And I talked about prepping a lot, and at that point I was a little bit doom and gloom about the future of mankind. Since then, I've gone back and forth on how I feel about the future of mankind, how I feel about our nation, as our world, people in general. And during that time, anybody who's subscribed to me for a while <laughs> might notice that I don't make videos about current events. Now, you may not even notice, just because I don't, um, but the fact that, if you consider it, I don't really talk about what's going on in the world. And it's not for lack of interest. I have mentioned in the past that part of the reason why I don't is because I like to make videos that are somewhat timeless. In other words, subjects that we all deal with. If you make a video about Napster, in 10 years it becomes irrelevant, right? Just like if you make a video today about Kanye West or something that some famous person did, it becomes irrelevant tomorrow. Now, the subjects I like to talk about, I hope, will be ones that carry on into the future. Things like, you know, how can we find our true selves? How can we uh, become happier people in our lives without any of the phony bullshit that you get from New Agers? Because I have a lot of New Age type beliefs about manifesting destiny, creating your own reality, yet at the same time, I don't play games with it. I realize there are limitations to it, you know. There are a lot of false claims out there and people making ridiculous, you know, ridiculous claims, and uh, I just have learned to use my common sense to try to wade through it as best I can. Anyhow, this leads me to my point about not covering new news things. I'm, I really, I'm really going to probably cover more things. This Kratom event has brought me into my active mode. I'm pissed off. I've been pissed off for a long time. I just didn't realize how much I'd suppressed it. I'd like people to understand, of course, for the last five years I've been raising my kids. Uh, I have a, you know, a three-year-old and a seven-year-old, and there's been a lot going on during that time where I had to say, hey, I have to live my life. I can't sit and worry about the future of mankind. But I also know that there's an obligation for me to share things that I learn with people. Now, <laughs> I've... <laughs> there are a lot of things that frustrate me, and part of, part of the reason why I don't talk about modern events or news is because... I feel like a lot of it, there's nothing we can do about it. Now, there are certain things we can speak up on, which is what we try to do when we can. But a lot of us Kratomites, who during this experience have noticed how active we can really get if we want to, might realize that sometimes it's good to jump in the other causes for other people who also have things going on that we're maybe not as concerned about. Because I'm sure all the Kratom fans out there have probably convinced one of their friends to sign this petition. Well, if your friend tries to get you to sign a petition, look into it. The idea is that if we're all a little more proactive in this world, then we might be able to change it. But there are certain things that are just overshadowed by big business. And this brings me to the news that I'm going to talk about, which is the Standing Rock event that's going on right now. There's basically a media blackout on two things right now. One is the Standing Rock rebellion, I'd like to call it, where the... Natives over there are saying, no, we don't want a pipeline going through our land. Look at what these pipelines can do. Now, a lot of people aren't even aware. Everyone's heard about this pipeline, if they're paying attention to anything at all. At anything at all. It goes all the way from Canada. It's been proposed for years. From Canada, all the way to the Gulf. Now, this covers the span from north all the way down to the south of America. I'm not sure the exact distance, but it seems like it would be around a thousand miles. It's big. And this pipeline would cross the Missouri River something like five times. And the idea is they don't want some of the last pristine water polluted out there. From what I heard, Jill Stein was out there. She spray-painted a bulldozer. Apparently a warrant was issued for her arrest. The lady who does Democracy Now! also was out there. And apparently, from what I heard, they also issued a warrant for her arrest. But I'm not sure what for. They don't want this covered. Big Oil has always had their bullies. And these people, they're what they might call their 
uh, well, they're mercenaries, basically, that these people hire, they sick their dogs on the protesters. And most people are aware of this, but just for anybody who isn't, they let their dogs go on the protesters, and they bit some of them. Um, there's been a lot of serious shit going on over there in Dakota area. And can you blame them for being angry? Well, meanwhile, just a few days ago, there was a major pipeline leak down in, I believe it was Alabama, if I'm not mistaken. And from what I'm understanding, there's a media blackout on this too, except for if you're local. Now, I can't say for sure that's true because I don't watch the media. I don't watch the news. I don't watch any newscasts. I just, I get my information through hearing the stories through people or looking at top headlines and then researching it to see what's really going on from the people who are actually there. Another thing that just happened was a sinkhole appeared in Florida underneath a gypsum deposit for a fertilizer company there. Now, this cave-in allowed radioactive poisonous water to seep in to this giant sinkhole and get in and poison and taint the water supply. Now, it's bad enough that it happened, but the fact that they didn't even let the public know for three weeks allows a little few of the residents down there to be kind of pissed off. If you're leaching radioactive wastewater from a fertilizer plant into the groundwater and not telling anyone for three weeks, well, that's a problem. It went right into the aquifer. I'm pointing these out to say this shit is happening all around the world. It's happening all around the nation. There are lies. There are corruption. Everybody is corrupt. And you, the more you try to expose it, the more you see exactly what's going on. So, it brings me to, I guess, a little dialogue about what do we do. And it's always been my thing that everybody's got a complaint, but nobody's doing anything. In this current event with the Kratom thing, people have been calling in, people have been trying to uh, get a hold of their officials, sending in emails, doing things they might not normally do. Well, likewise, let me tell you with the Bernie Sanders campaign, um, you know, I've, I've never been that politically interested. I did vote for Obama, and I did hope for change. And I also don't have a huge thing against Obama like everyone does. Yes, he let me down big time. He let us all down. But he's not as much of a puppet as some of these guys. I saw the bills he tried to pass, over 240 of them from the last time I looked, that they declined, some of them helping veterans, assisting people like you and me, raising minimum wage. A president can only do so much. So worrying about what the president's going to do or declare is irrelevant with Congress and all the loopholes. It's a benefit and it's a risk because we have the ability for a good president to make executive decisions to change things, but a bad president to make executive decisions to destroy things, like George Bush decided to go to war, like the false premise of going to Vietnam and various other wars. And I don't like to diss on my country, you know? I was born here. I love it here. But I had a discussion the other day with my neighbor. We ended up talking about football, because I said, I know he likes football. And uh, we can discuss it. And I was like, I know you're into it, but I just can't stand it. And especially college, because the kids aren't paid. They're not allowed to make any money. If college players are caught making any profit or paying, having an autograph or donation or anything, they get fired from basically their scholarship, their future. They lose their scholarship. They want a lot of these people here just to play ball. And uh, anyhow, we got to talking about the fellow who, I don't follow it, and I don't want to get into the, the details of it, but the guy who didn't stand for the national anthem. And everybody went ballistic, and some of the football you know, fans were saying, hey, this has got to stop, this is spreading, was the way one guy said it. This... And, and, and as, as my wife told me, I can't remember the, the exact wording, but it's spreading as if it's a disease instead of maybe a cure. Maybe people need to start standing up for what they believe. And at the same time, some people need to keep sitting down for what they believe. If you don't want to stand for the national anthem because you don't believe in what the flag stands for, that's your choice. That's what the soldiers fought for. That's what our country stands for, is that freedom. But... People are angry at him because of the reasons he gave. He was angry, the racist, and, and, and I, I said, set all aside what his reasoning is. The fact is, that's his free right. Now, there 
My point being that there are a lot of people out there who would also not like to stand for the national anthem. There are a lot of people out there who would not like to pledge allegiance to the flag, but they do it because everyone else does. You go to your kid's school, they do the Pledge of Allegiance, you don't want to embarrass your kid, so you do it. Or you do it just because you've always done it. But you have to think about what you're saying there. You're pledging allegiance to the flag. That is the ultimate, you know, um, if there's any mind, you know, the getting the youth into the fact that you are pledging allegiance to this flag and to the republic for which it stands. And regardless of the God Clause, I'd like to say that what does it stand for? And this is what angers Americans. We like our country, and we love the people around us, but we get pretty frustrated at each other because of what we're frustrated about that's going on in the world. Because of the things we see on TV. And to put it into perspective, you're always going to see the negative. You're never going to see anybody talk about how great the world is as much as we will see the negative, just like negative reviews for products always outweigh positive because, well, unless it's an easy, quick, like, five-star review for, you know, uh, then there are paid reviews and everything else. In other words, it's really hard to find out what's actually going on in the world. It sucks. It's easy to get pissed off. I don't get angry anymore. And I found myself today frustrated. I found myself getting a little irritated with a couple people when I was out and about. And I realized that it was because I'm trying to hold back my frustration over the entire system falling apart, but nobody even making any attempt to repair it. The idea that there are a lot of people angry with what's going on in the world, but not very many people really stepping up and doing anything. And the few that are, are, are gauged as heroes, but the rest of the people have the bystander effect. And as I mentioned earlier in a video, they, they, that's the idea that other people will do it, and you don't have to. And, you know, we have a lot of responsibilities, a lot of us do, especially if we have families. There are a lot of different types of people. Some people have a lot less to lose. Um, for a lot of us, we have to protect our families, we have to protect our, our lives, you know. Uh, we have to be happy first in order to make others happy. But I don't understand why so many people are willing to sacrifice basic human rights in order for them to be happy. And are they happy? And maybe they've just never had the opportunity to see what it's like to actually help others. We don't gauge success by income. We gauge success by happiness. Period. But there is a point to that. At least a uh, another point to make. It's not just about happiness. If your happiness comes at the cost of anyone else's happiness, then the foundation will crumble. And that is the one thing I know for sure. If nature gives us any indication whatsoever of balance, of what's fair, we'll find that a few animals will always take a few more nuts. There will always be healthier wolves in the pack. There will always be alphas. There will always be group activities that benefit the whole. These are things we observe in all of the animals and insects. Just the amazing idea of an anthill. It's easy to put it out of your mind. What is really going on there? That's one brain. That is a brain, an organism working in unison for the good of the whole. No one ant can survive. No one human can survive without the rest of us working together. And if we want to work as an organism, that means we have to start fighting the right people instead of each other. I see a lot of complaints online about the government, about other things in the world and what's wrong, but not only is there not enough action, I included, we're all guilty, but... There's also not enough coming together, and I think that that's the first step. So I'd like to point out two things. One, we need to come together on the issues. We don't have to agree on how to get there. We don't have to agree on the resolution. We don't even have to agree on all the things that need to be changed. But we have to stop fighting amongst each other and saying, you need to con be concerned about this, or you need to be concerned about that, and come together. But we cannot structure a movement 
And I'd like to, you know, this is my fair warning in all the research I've done in my life about movements, protests, you know. Um, uh, there's just no way to organize a nationwide march on the White House. There are some nations that will go out into the streets and take over. I'm not saying it's not possible. What I'm saying is in, if we want to consider ourselves civilized, then we have to learn how to diplomatically take back our country. Not that protesting and marching doesn't work. It does. But if you organize anything too well, if a large enough group gets together and organizes a movement, let's say online, which is how we would all do it, that's just how it's done now, then those movements will be infiltrated by the undesirables. I don't know if you're aware of this, but during the, I believe in the 2000s, uh, during the Iraq War, there was a lot of talk about people not, not who were talking against America. It was considered treasonous. And the government had several spies sent out into these groups, particular groups, and posing as members in order to hear what people were talking about, what they were saying about the government. And there was one report we read about a FBI agent who had infiltrated a sewing circle with a bunch of ladies. And their job was to go to work and sew with these ladies to hear what they were saying about George Bush, about the cabinet, about the government. These are, this is how desperate these people are to keep people quiet. So it's a matter of being as damn loud as you can but let's make it more of a game of whack-a-mole than, uh, than, than all of us screaming at the same time. Because if you organized a giant march with millions of people, it would be knocked down right away. Nobody's going to approve that permit, and without permits you will be arrested, and the tear gas will fly, and for a while people will be angry, and then it will go back to the way it is. The government here has set up to appease its people. Uh, no, sorry, step back. It's set to appease those who want people to remain quiet. It's set up to shut people up who are too loud. And those who have spoken up about the corruption, the ones who speak the loudest are the ones who are the hardest to knock down. And so all of us need to stand up and stand for what we believe in. And this means each individual reporting on the little things that we find that are corrupt. Like these native tribes fighting to preserve their land from a pipeline with the company telling them, no, it'll be fine, it won't hurt your water. And then within a month, there's a pipeline explosion, leak. I, I don't know what to say. People just need to pay more attention. If you're still watching cable, turn it off. I don't tell people what to do. I try not to judge and tell others what they should and shouldn't do because I know we're all different. But stop watching network news. Cancel your cable subscription. Turn off the commercials. I haven't seen a single election commercial this season. It's because I don't have a TV to watch it on and I'm so glad. And I haven't seen a prescription drug commercial in a long time either and that's not such a bad thing. So, not to be pious because it's not about that. I just want others to know how great it is to be able to get away from that so you can be a little more clear-headed because being angry is okay. Utilizing that anger and harnessing it in order to make change is what we all need to do. So, peace out.